This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Community Behavioral Health. It truly is one of the most wonderful times of the year for many people. It's easy for them to feel the joy, the magic, the love that the holiday season seems to bring. But for others, this time of year isn't always jolly for whatever reason. It's tough. Many factors can come into play for a person who is struggling to get through these months when they feel anything but joy inside. Here to provide some insight on that is Dr. Suni Jani of Community Behavioral Health. And the first thing that we'd like to address is the depression, obviously. Yes. Yes. Um, so there's kind of two types of depression we're talking about here. One kind is called seasonal affective disorder, which is a real biological condition and is most often associated with winter months when there's less sunlight outside. And there are some people who may be mostly fine the rest of the year, but they have pretty significant depression during this time. And the treatment for it, believe it or not, is like a 10,000 lux prescription light and as well as some medication and therapy. So that's kind of the biology of this time sure. of year. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is sort of normal anticipated holiday stress. There's a lot of demand for people during the holidays, even though it's a really exciting time and a lot of people do look forward to having time off and being with family. Yeah, and a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves to make it yeah. wonderful <laughs> for everyone else. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what that's like a big, big starting factor of yeah, this. There's yeah. a lot of pressure, even though there's a lot of joy. Yeah, is, <laughs> is that what we call the holiday blues? Yeah, that's pretty much an accurate mm -hmm. term for it. It sounds paradoxical because the word holiday makes us all really excited, but then blues right after you think, oh, what a bummer. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's coming. Um, the reality is it's a time of year when sometimes people have this idea of perfection and they think it has to look a certain way. I need to have so many people here. There has to be these gifts. Some people feel pressure to get gifts that maybe they can't afford. For their relatives, right. there is a lot of different things that are very holiday specific that tend to be a major source of stress. Mm. So you mentioned finances being a huge part of stress. How is it that we can prevent that aside from just spending less money? <laughs> I think definitely speaking to a financial advisor, a bank is the <laughs> first way to go. Um, but just like we deal with any trigger for our anxiety, sometimes it involves taking a step back and you know reasoning with yourself. What is it that I have? What is it that I'm willing to do right now? And what do I know tends to cause me a lot of stress? So one of the most common things we hear about with finances and the holidays are people going, this isn't in my budget and I feel guilty. So sometimes there's emotions around it where people think I don't have the finances I should have for a perfect holiday. And sometimes it's about reframing that to realize the holiday season isn't about how much money you have. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about some healthy behaviors we can en engage in to try to reduce those triggers. Yeah, so another thing we know about the holidays, it is our time of excess mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot of people do look forward to it, but we also know for some people it can hit them harder than others. So if you feel a little bit pressured to drink at a holiday party, but you know I don't do so well beyond a certain limit, be aware of your limits. Go into it well rested. There are, as I know online shopping makes it that, so that we can be up all night <laughs> and keep going, but a lot of you know good sleep and having good sleep hygiene is an important part of getting through this time. And then it's almost like a marathon, so you know, take breaks, plenty of fluids, um, reconnect with people who matter. And, it's intense. Uh, it's intense. It's an intense time. <laughs> so if we notice a family member who has some sort of, like a, a couple of depressive traits, mm -hmm. what should we do as loved ones? You, believe it or not, because you're their loved ones, you get to have the first pass to speak with them and go, hey, I know you, and I notice you're not seeming like yourself. Can, I, I want to talk about it, you know, I care about you. Really getting the message across that maybe you're not going to talk to me, but I need you to know you have a support system right now. And maybe not in that moment, but eventually someone will turn to you and really appreciate what you've done. Hmm. All right, good yeah. things to think about. Dr. Suni Johnny with Community Behavior. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for coming you. in this afternoon.